How can one separate themselves from their own writings as not to live through them over and over again? Marina Tsvetiva once told Anna Amatova, don't you know that everything written in the poems comes true? That is how I understood that it is not happening to me only. How should I write? Everything I write down and frame creatively, I have to relive later. Even while describing events that have already taken place. It seems I should be happy to just go ahead and imagine absolutely anything, but it doesn't work that way. Every author knows that stories write themselves, and we are just the ones putting them on paper. But you can't toss words out of a song, a character can't be changed, his destiny should not be altered, everything would be just fine if it was only required to maintain a specific state live a particular life while writing everything down. But there is no longer any energy to live through all of that. How can I stop it? How can I separate myself from a book character, so that I don't have to live through that experience? It is very scary when you bring into the world something that neither you or this world can handle. Where is the fine line of author's accountability for his work? Your question is very complicated, colleague, and I will try to answer it. But I can't promise you that you'll like my response. Let's, perhaps, start with the end. Where does the author's accountability lie, and how to stop it? The answer is, to stop writing. And this is impossible for an author. The authors fill the informational space for present-day people as well as future dwellers of this world. We can conditionally divide them into two categories. An author on a channel, and an author without it. An author without a channel will be busy with compilation, compiling from already existing sources, something mediocre, average. At times he manages to create something resembling original work, but usually these are some type of simulations with a very short lifespan. They are good for one paycheck only, so to say, and not the second one. On the other hand, there are authors that work on a channel. And here, colleague, my words may upset you. In this type of state you no longer belong to yourself, the information is flowing through you. The only difference is that for some, it may be manifested through their mouth, for others it manifests through the eyes, for others through mimics. Take an actor for instance, and authors manifest it through their hands. It is truly impossible not to write. In this case, actually, very little depends on the author himself since he is not the one coming up with the plot. After receiving the information he just gives it a certain form. The only thing he can do is to put it into words that correspond to a cultural tradition of the modern day, in order to express it. If we take a look at the literature of various epics, we can see that in the 17th century it was customary to formulate and compound the sentences in a certain way which differed from the 18th century. It was done much more differently in the 19th century. The 20th century had everything simplified. And the 21st, well, here pretty soon all the books will be written with emojis. It's a joke, of course. The word does possess a certain significance. But this is the only thing, the only autonomous component that the author allows himself to add, especially if this author is a poet. Just as you, colleague, have already mentioned in the example, with two female poets. In general, of course, the information exists and finds its way onto the paper, or on the screen. The craftsman who serves as a conduit can't do anything about it. It just simply comes out of him. In this particular case, this category of an author serves as a conduit, just a conduit, and nothing else. It is extremely ungrateful and difficult work. Very seldom fame and glory find authors during their lifetime. 
But only if you are, I don't know, following in Asimov's footsteps or those of Ray Bradbury, and you write 500 books during your whole lifetime, maybe a dozen of them will make it, and, perhaps, you'll make a buck or two, but typically, it's not how it works. It's an extremely ungrateful job to be a conduit. It is possible to stop it, of course. Just stop writing, switch to boring physical labor instead. After a while, the channel will close, but it won't open any more, and more likely it will never open again, it's like magic. If you gave it up, then you will never be able to get it back. But, in reality, a colleague raised a very interesting question. She is not able, she says, to relive everything she once described. And this is a true paradox. Everyone has noted this already. And here, of course, the question is a little bit more profound than the unlucky fate of an author. Now, even those who don't write books and even those who barely read, begin to notice that everything around them they've already seen somewhere and maybe even read about it. Earlier event-based sequences and an evolving world. Until very recently, somehow were able to fit into the algorithms of myths because myths are very voluminous systems and, generally, represent the energy of time, which is contained within a finished structure of the myth. It is refracted into the event-based field by various ways, where only the architectonics of a myth can be traced through certain sensuous elements. But in general, the scenario is every time different, and only the one who truly knows the myth understands that now, in this story, in this era, a certain myth is being fulfilled, and in the life of this person, this other myth is being fulfilled, and in another person's life it's this other myth. Starting somewhere in the middle of the 20th century, it seems as if the myths have run out. Because things that had nothing to do with mythology began to appear as scenarios, it was evident in later works, first starting with literature, and all of us have witnessed it. Every science fiction piece created in the early 20th century, all of a sudden, 50 years later, began to come true in one way or another. Everyone talks about profits. It's not a prophecy, it's not a vision, it's magic. They received the information, got it straight out from the Atman and presented it, just as described by a colleague, in an already complete scenario. Then this informational volume has matured, pulled in a certain amount of time, refracted, as if through a lens, and there, within the causal field, it manifested itself through certain event-based storylines, particular events, certain situations, not just for one individual, but rather for many. This is what happens when the tradition or informational packet, which are the prototype for the event formation, matures meaning that it becomes finished, whole, basically that's it, a program is ready. If using computer language, this is a program, and it just updated itself to completion. And for a while, we went on with our lives being influenced by these literary works, which in fact were very close to the heart of any educated person since intelligent people usually enjoy literature. Then cinematography appeared and became the one to come up with all these finished programs. And everything we're seeing right now, as many of you have noticed, has been seen by us already about 10 to 15 years ago. We've seen it in literary works and the movies. Of course, the echoes of myths still remain, but it's as if reality has run out of scenarios and started to absorb short cinematographic stories created by people, while somehow getting closer and closer to the present day.
If a year or two ago, we were witnessing the scenarios of movies filmed in the late 90s, early 2000s, then this year, the scenarios that had been implemented in the movies filmed in 2015 are taking the stage. Logic tells us that there is not much time left until the scenario will coincide with reality. But it's not a joke, by the way, this is absolutely not a joke. Because these scenarios, the situations of the event-based field are in fact appearing from somewhere. They are coming from Atman, while being refracted through the buddhic level, through the egregores. These informational packets are distributed by the egregores in space and time so that they were able to create a specific event-based field at the causal level. But something got broken during this process. It got broken within the egregoral world, of course. They stopped maintaining the informational current. They stopped distributing it, spreading it in time so that at least it wouldn't be as noticeable and not so catastrophic for others. But they are unable to do even that properly any longer. This is an indication that the egregorial field, the second circle of the profoundations, is thinning, which I told you about in the previous question. Something is happening to it. It stopped being so rigid, as if an iron wall that was shielding us from the world of the gods suddenly started to wear out and collapse. And we suddenly saw that it's not iron at all, and that it's actually made out of paper, and it turns out that we didn't have to erode it at its key points. It was enough just to poke it with your finger, and that's all. Meaning that all of this rigidity was just the appearance. And that's what we're seeing right now. The egregorial world is thinning. The egregores no longer serve the function of a gatekeeper something they used to do before. As a result, contacts with the forces have become much denser. This time, it's the people, and not the egregores who receive certain information from the gods, from Atman. And people manifest it through the works of art, which we now see in great numbers. And these are truly prophetic works, truly prophetic. And they manifest themselves in the surrounding reality much faster than before. We live in the age of change, in the era of total changes. And the very effect that a colleague described, and the one that I have tried to explain to you, those are the indicators that we are approaching the finish line the end of these changes. Don't be scared, it's all for the best.